little bit down the road from Lake Mivatan where we were skiing, we decided to pop into a really cool geothermal area called Kferjev. Uh, this place is basically what you could expect from a geothermal area. Lots of these really cool fumaroles, there's some nice boiling mud, uh, cool sulfurous colors and uh, yeah, yeah, lots of steam coming out really. <laughs> a lot of cool stuff so you can be sure we're going to have a lot of drone footage for this. Kferjev is one of the most out of this world sites you can find in Iceland. It is located at the foot of the Nalmafjell volcanic mountain. The mountain is composed of rhyolite, which gives the terrain extraordinary colors such as pink, bright yellow, gray blue, and green. This geothermal area consists of fumaroles, large mud pools, steam vents, and an orangey red landscape. A fumarole is a vent in the Earth's surface from which steam and volcanic gases are emitted. The major source of the water vapor emitted from fumaroles is groundwater heated by bodies of magma lying relatively close to the surface. Can you describe the smell? It smells like eggs. Uh, nice description. <laughs> Boiled eggs. The vividly coloured rocks and soil in many of Iceland's geothermal areas are the result of hot acidic gases and fluids interacting with the rock. Some of the more unusual shades include purple from mercury sulphide, orange which is from arsenic sulphide and the yellow to grey which is just from sulphur itself. It's so important to stay on track because the crust can be so thin that you might just step through right into the boiling mud. These mud pools form where steam and gas rise to the surface under rainwater ponds. The acidic gases attack surface rocks forming clay and then the clay rich soil mixes with the pond water to produce a muddy steam heated slurry or a mud pool. The constant release of volcanic fumes has rendered the ground extremely sterile and acidic making it unfit for any plant growth. Yeah, one of the dangers here about flying in a very steamy area in sub-zero temperatures, you can get a lot of ice accumulating on the propellers of your drone. So luckily, I took it down before it fell into a mud bath. Um, I'll keep that in mind for next time, I think. <laughs> so what about the, the walking path? Yeah, not great. You can see my shoes probably weigh an extra kilo. Oh man, that's a lot. Due all the mud <laughs> that's accumulated. But uh, luckily there's a lot of snow around here so we can just sort of clean them off quite easily. <laughs>
it's only a short drive north of Akureyri. There's a tiny little village called Dalvik. Uh, it's quite famous for its uh, well watching and also as sort of the entryway to a lot of off-piste and uh, downhill skiing. There's a little ski slope just over here. Nice little church as you see behind me and a beautiful harbour. We're going to go check out in just a moment's time. So let's go. And that's it, that's uh, the end of our time here in Akureyri. I think we're definitely going to be coming back in the summertime to check this place out. So, uh, hope you enjoyed everything, and as always, like, comment, subscribe. And I think we'll leave you with some very nice directions. The concrete circuit is a 15 meter high monolith or sea stack. It is actually an eroded volcanic dike or a lava plug from a volcano, but in this case the surrounding craters have eroded over time. It is also referred to as the Rhino Rock in Iceland, but according to legend it is a petrified troll. The circle was in danger of sea erosion, and the base, which is only about 1 to 2 meters thick, had to be strengthened with concrete. In 1955, it was so unstable that the locals started to collect money to save it. The legs, furthest to the right, used to have a hole in them, but it was filled up with concrete. Many types of seabirds, especially gulls and fulmars, have made their nests on Crete circle for centuries. Their guano deposit has made its mark on the cliff, painting it white in many places. Hence the cliff is named White Shirt. This geological oddity was commemorated on an Icelandic stamp in 1990. The stamps look quite cool and we'll have a link to them in the description.